Let's repair this MTX48 ODAC. I found it at a dumpster hunt and it doesn't turn on, obviously. It's at the moment plugged in. It does absolutely nothing. This is some kind of a sound controller. We've got four zones here. We've got a little speaker in there. You can pre listen to the sound or music or whatever it is. Got some knob here, some more knobs here, They're like encoders, the push button, and I think that uh, these uh, switches here are actually connected to the speaker here, so you can actually listen to the different channels. Here we've got the back side of it, that looks like some Ethernet connections here, but are used for something else. Got these uh, audio outputs. 24 volt input here, paging, wonder what that does, Ethernet, RS232, some more like outputs here, two microphone inputs, you see the two microphone inputs, designed in Belgium, made in China, risk of electric shock, do not open, I bet you I will, same type of fuse, uh, do not expose the equipment to rain or moisture, Maybe that's why it's broken. This unit looks a lot like a VHS player. But the looks of it, it should have these uh, little brackets here. It should be like one of these units with the brackets here. But I think they have cut them off. It looks like they have just uh, sawn off the actual brackets here. What a shame. Some screws are removed and let's lift the lid off. And we are in. That's a lot of unpopulated space in there. You can see a view from the top here. Got a lot of unpopulated place here. I think this unit can have more than just four channels. We've got a power supply down here, some controls, We've got some uh, power supply here as well. The switching regulators. See the inductors here and the capacitors. Those are some kind of MOSFETs here. The double sided board and the control chips are underneath. Looks like two power inputs here. Yes, we actually got a 24 volt power input here as well. Yes, let's do some measurements and see if everything is okay. This is strange. Why is the cable uh, like that? Like some uh, pinched hole in it. But the other wires look fine. Looks like only this one has this uh, strange mark in it. Let's begin by checking some voltages. Let's turn it on again and plug it in. Let's measure some voltages. Let's measure here. Nothing. Maybe a fuse is blown. Yes, maybe a fuse is blown. There is a fuse in the plug here. Here's the fuse. It looks okay. You can see a fine wire in there. It looks like a good fuse. We even got another fuse in here. Let's, let's put this on uh, continuity. It, it, it is blown, but it looks okay. Let's measure the other one. Yes, this one is okay, so let's just switch those and connect a uh, like a limiting light bulb to it. So if there's anything wrong with the power supply or the wiring, I would not damage this unit further. Now I've got a 60 watt light bulb in series. Need to have a better setup for this. Let's plug it in. Let's see if something blows up. Yes, the light bulb did something, it just glowed a bit. But yes, it's doing something. That's a microcontroller, because it's next to the crystal. Let's measure if we got a decent voltage. Spot on 24 volts. Yes, maybe it was some corrosion or something in here. It's a slow blow 1 amp. Now that we know it's working, let's connect it straight to the mains. Now we don't got any exposed live, live wires here. Let's turn it on. 
it's like a Hirschen sound from the speaker and the LED starts blinking. But the power LED doesn't turn on. Let's connect a uh, audio source to it and see if we get any sound out of the speaker. And here's the audio source. Capacitor microphone or condenser microphone. Let's connect it here. On the channel one. It does something. It's a resonance, it feeds back to the system, so it definitely does something. Yes, I need a better audio source for it. You can see on the LEDs on the front there. So yes, it looks like the unit is working uh, with no problem. Let's just check the LED here and see what the problem with that is. Let's make sure that the LED isn't broken, so let's check for voltage on the LED terminals. 5.3 volts? That's too much voltage for LED. It doesn't look like it got any resistor there. There's an open circuit voltage maybe. Maybe the LED is broken. Got an open circuit. Yes, I got an LED here, so let's just connect it across the terminals here. That shines pretty bright. But yes, it definitely gives out some voltage here. So yes, then maybe the LED is broken, so let's uh, replace that as well. Of course, unplugging it before we do that, because we got a power switch here. I just need to unscrew it. Let's unscrew it. And here's the LED. There is no resistor here to limit the current. It has place for two LEDs. It's gonna have two LEDs in there. So yes, let's put a green LED here. 3 millimeter green, it's a bunch of green LEDs here. This will be good, I have long legs, let's desolder it. Let's just uh, test it first and see if the LED is actually broken or maybe some tracks are gone here. Get some battery. Wrong polarity maybe. It's working. How come? It looks like the, the both pads are actually connected in parallel. These are connected together and those are connected together. And let's beep them. Negative here. They don't make connection. The positive. The positive is working. But the negative have gone open circuit. Look at the track here. Is that just a piece of silk screen or what is that? I just solder back the old LED here. I'm gonna put a little bodge wire between here, so it should be working. The end here. Yes, now it should be working. Yes, let's turn it on. Nice. Yes, I'll screw it in uh, the parts again. Let's turn it on. Yes, it flashes a couple of times and it stays on. Pretty bright light actually. Here are the audio control chips, the TDA. Uh, 7468D. Yes, I definitely have more channels here. And these are RS485 transceiver chips. And those are connecting to the ports here. So this was a quite easy repair. I wonder what I can do with it. Maybe selling it off. Hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.